Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and in this video I'm going to try and show an aspect of using lens tilt to place the focal plane in an arbitrary position. Now um, I'm using a sort of simplified arrangement here where the camera is pointing down here, the plane I'm interested in is the one running along here, along the top of the, the desk here. And uh, these little cars will just help me show the focus. Um, I'm recording the video uh, on the uh, Canon 5DS here, which has a 24mm tilt shift lens on it. Now I've set that at f3.5. The reason for using that is to try and show out of focus effects. Um, the aperture at 3.5 is a little small to really clearly show out of focus effects, but the effect of the tilt is quite obvious in it. What I would say is this is a plane running at an angle to here. It could be sideways, it could be at some other angle. Now I've got some articles that go into this in a lot more detail. Um, obviously I've got my book uh, that I've written about using tilt shift lenses and there is a special technique for setting the uh, plane of focus at any particular plane in front of the camera if the lens can tilt enough and focus enough to get it uh, but that's rather more complex to show than this since it involves rotating the lens and its mount as well. So this is just simple downwards shift, a downwards tilt I should say, the idea to be get the lens tilted downwards so that the plane of focus runs along here. Now you could rotate that by 90 degrees and have the plane of focus running on a wall or whatever but anyway I've got uh, Canon's uh, EOS utility software running on laptop and that is showing the view from the camera there and at the moment it's focused about here. So if I just change focus, there we go, we've now got it focused about here. And that's simple focus, there's no tilt, that's just changing the focus. You'll notice there's a little bit of focus breathing, so the focal length changes slightly. You get that with almost any lenses, some lenses but less than others, some more than others. Likewise, when I tilt, there will be some slight change of composition. Now it's less with one of the lenses here, like the Canon lenses or the Nikon lenses. Uh, I tested a, a PCE45 recently. It's less on that, but if you're using adapter, because the tilt, the lens is uh, in front of the tilt unit, uh, there's quite a bit of physical movement of the lens when it tilts, and that can change composition. Now that means that Yes, a setup like this helps, but you're going to have to tweak it afterwards. Um, so you set it up, see what it looks like, and then decide whether you need to move the camera, point the camera a slightly different direction, whether you need a bit of shift or something like that to correct for it. So it means it's an iterative, of, um, an iterative approach. Um, because of that, I can't just say, you do this, you do that, it works. Because it's different for every lens, the camera doesn't make that much difference, but certainly the lens setup makes quite a lot of difference. Um, in fact, I even have a handy reference sheet that I leave in my camera bag for remembering this iterative procedure. I don't do it every other day, so I don't necessarily remember it all the time. So uh, you, know, you need uh, to check these things. This is available on the article, on the written article, and I'll include a copy of it in the notes to this video. But anyway, we've got this. If I now set, now I'll focus at the far point. So I've focused on the car at the end here. Now, in the, uh, the process that we go through here, it says pick an arbitrary amount of tilt. Well, I'll start with zero tilt. So no tilt at all, so effectively it's just an ordinary lens. Now, the thing is you focus on the far point, which is here, and then you look at the near point. Now, you may need to magnify to see this. Uh, certainly with a studio setup, it's much easier to do uh, than it is outdoors, but you can quickly get the hang of this. Um, if you were doing stuff outdoors though, I would say there is a easy way of working out tilt settings using just a table of settings for lens focal length that I use a lot. Outdoor use, that works all the time. Um, there's very little errors. 
indoor use because you're trying to work out distances and they can, even, it can give you an idea of the initial tilt setting but it's much trickier to use and that's because of the design of the lenses and once again every lens is slightly different which can cause a few issues for that there. Now, anyway, got this. Now the first thing I do is look at that and I'm now looking at this near point and I need to decrease the focus distance. Now that's the setting on the lens here. So I will decrease the focus distance. And guess what? It gets sharper. Well, it would anyway, because it's just a normal, normal, normal lens. And here it says, if the near point becomes sharper, you need more tilt. Well, yes, we need more tilt, because we need tilt to be able to get the plane along here. But this is just showing the extreme example of, I've decreased the focus distance there, and it's got sharper, so we need more tilt. And this is where I will set some tilt. I'll go back to here. I'll add, I'll just pick an arbitrary amount of tilt. Let's say five degrees. In fact, I'll go right the full way up to eight degrees that you can get on this lens. Once again, I'll focus on the far point. Notice how the composition has changed slightly. We've lost a little bit at the top, but I'm now focused on that far point. If I reduce the setting, it gets more blurred here. That means I need less tilt. So, no tilt is not enough, full tilt's too much. Well, it's gonna be something in between. Um, I'll take it down to about five, about five degrees of tilt. This is just reading off what it says on the lens here. There's no accuracy in this, there's no precision. Um, if you come across phone apps and things like that that offer to calculate this for you, and they have decimal places in the amount of tilt um, they are written by somebody who likes writing software or an engineer. They're not written by a practical photographer. Or at least they shouldn't be, because you cannot set, say, 5.2 degrees of tilt on a lens like this. You can set about 5. You can set maybe 5.5. But 5.2? No, it's not. Be very wary of phone apps that promise to do this for you. Um, they've often got vastly too much precision in them. So I'll go so far as to say they're worse than useless. <laughs> Sorry people who wrote them, but uh, you know. So, but anyway, here we go. We've now got about five degrees of tilt. I'm gonna focus on the far end. And I've got that sharp. And if I look here, we've got it sharp. And, oh, here, here's a copy of my book conveniently positioned. Uh, we see that actually uh, we're pretty close. The, Plane of focus at this, this close to the lens is very thin. And remember, we're shooting this at f3.5. So if you want a practical amount of depth of field, you're probably going to want to set it at 3.5 and then stop the lens down a bit. Quality improves, depth of field improves. When I say depth of field, it's the thickness of the wedge of focus because it's not a flat plane of focus. It's, always, it's thicker at this end than it is at this end. So the depth of field here may be only a few millimetres. The depth of field here should be enough to get yep, the entire dice in. So we've got that pretty close, but I'm just going to check again. I'm going to decrease the focus distance and see whether it gets sharper. No, it doesn't. It gets slightly softer. So it gets softer. I need less tilt, so I need slightly less than five degrees of tilt. So let's just move that down to about about four and a half focus on the back there we go that's sharp look at something close alter the reduce it does it get sharper no no there we go that's it i've set the plane of focus i've got about four and a half degrees of tilt for this particular setup. Plane of focus runs along here. Um, you can see out the back, the plane of focus also heads out over the back here and hits about here, but that's out of the framing here. Now, I mentioned about the change in alignment. I've rotated the 
tilt axis on this so it's tilting up and down and it's shifting up and down. Now your lens may or may not offer this but in this instance I can change the composition just by adding a little bit of vertical shift and we're back. And that hasn't really changed the, uh, the plane effects. It has actually lifted it a few, the whole thing, a few millimeters. But in this instance, it's not really enough to show, particularly since I'm shooting at f3.5. Now, do I really need to that? I don't need f3.5. Um, if I'd remembered to set this on auto, I could now stop it down and show you the increased depth of field, but I haven't. I've got everything set fully manual. Um, what I would say is experiment with stuff like this. Experiment with running the plane of focus along a wall, along a ceiling, along a floor. Um, if you're in a larger space, you can use the tilt tables and get an idea of the tilt from that, just from the height of the camera off the ground. But uh, then you just change your focus and the tilt plane moves. So we've got this here. Um, if I change the focus, if I increase the focus, the tilt will come down so it will run parallel with the direction the camera is pointing in here um, and it will change here. So it's a combination, the focus setting on here it's at 0.5 meter. Remember that when you're using tilt though the numbers here have no meaning. There is no connection between the physical tilt of the lens and where this plane is. There is no di uh, say direct connection, in other words, you tilt this five degrees and the plane here is tilted, but that doesn't happen. Um, it depends entirely on the combination of tilt and focus. And that's the important thing to remember. With ordinary photography, you focus at a distance, do whatever you like, do you expose, do anything with it. But with tilt, with this, you have to set the tilt and the focus setting Notice I don't say focus distance and the focus setting at a particular bit to get what you want. So I've done that and there we go. We've got that. Um, hope that's been of some use. I've done one or two other uh, videos about tilt. Tilt is much more difficult to show in this instance than it is uh, for using uh, shift. But uh, hopefully uh, this makes it a bit clearer. I would say have a read of the articles on the Northlight website. There's loads of stuff there. And did I mention it? Oh yes, the book. So hope that's a bit of help. Thanks very much. Bye.